Well, I, there's probably you know a few different elements of it, and, and one of it you could say the playmaker ability to, to get it in the end zone, um, whether that's receiving or running back or elements of offensive line. There's there's a lot of things that we can obviously get better at, um, particularly when you get down inside the red zone. That's that's a critical point of being able to score points, and you know we've. We haven't scored enough points, and you know whether, however you evaluate that, the bottom line offensively is is to put points on the board, and you got to we have to find guys that can do that. If, if it's a receiver, if it's a running back, or whoever it may be, that's you know that's that's our job to do that. And on the other side is to keep them out of the end zone when they, when the other team gets in the red zone, and that's another you know that's another issue to to control games is you got to score when you have to. And then keep them out. So it's an ongoing process, Jerry, in terms of evaluating who we're recruiting, who we're asking to uh, what what positions we want to put them in to be successful, and um, and that's something we will we will continue and always try to do. But it has to be addressed and it has to be noted and done. Well, ha definitely having a guy like Trey that you know can see the field. Can observe practice. Can you know is in the meeting rooms and can can help with the you know with the, the studying of the receivers and the different things that are going to be required uh, for for Tim to play. It, it is like having another coach, uh, but more than that, probably even another friend, a guy that played as a true freshman that knows exactly what Tim is going through. And when you have that type of you know individual that's willing to reach out and and say, listen, I'll I'll, I'll be your big brother, your role model, your mentor, whatever that is. Is uh, is again? It speaks to the type of person that uh, the trade is. I demand a lot from the players. I demand, demand a lot from myself. You know, I am an emotional, fiery, energetic guy. So there's no niceness in that. I mean, there's a there's a way that I believe that you have to play. With energy and passion, and if that's conveyed in the way I talk to them, my my demonstrative manner, then then you know there is no nicety to that. And there's an expectation of wanting to play tough, smart, and aggressive. And when it's not like that, then, then they understand and they know that that's not that's not good enough. What we have to continue to keep teaching these players and, and, and keep striving on is that. You know, there's an expectation of, of performing. And, and whether it's through yelling, screaming, patting on the back, kicking in the butt, whatever it is, there's an, ex there's an expectation of performing. And, um, and that's, that's the bottom line for us. Well, uh, that's a great question. Because um, I've been there. You know, I've had those moments where you know, that sudden rush of exhilaration or um, the disappointment of, of the last minute opportunities that happen and just, I mean, you, you live so much in the moment for these games that these young men are out there playing because you know that they tend to believe that their self-worth is tied up into every play. And you want so much for the success of those plays or those opportunities for them to come out on the, on, the, on the positive end. And when those things don't happen, it's like a, a piece of you, you know, also disappears as well. And it, it's tough, but you have to be, I try to be grounded. As you guys know, I talk about faith, family, and football as being priorities for me. And, um, but it's difficult sometimes when the exhilaration or the disappointment of a game happens and you, you put so much into it, so much time, so much effort, so much energy of wanting them to, to be successful that when it doesn't, you know, that it takes a physical toll, you know, on you personally. And as I said, uh, Kelly Pugh and Dr. McKnight do a great job with, uh, with me and um, I'll just leave it at that. Defense is predicated upon the middle linebackers calling, you know, the fronts, the stunts, making the adjustments, um, communicating with the secondary, 
you know, we also know that Henry was an all ACC academic performer as well. So he's a young man that's smart. He's got good football sense. And, you know, I, he is amongst the top leaders in the ACC in tackles because he understands the defense. He understands the gap placement where, where a lineman moves one place. You know, he's got to be at the other. So he's done a nice job with that. And, you know, he's the quarterback of the defense because it does center so much around him getting everyone lined up and communicating all the different elements of the defense. So he's had a really nice year. And um, you know, with three games left, uh, as I said, he can, he can put himself in position to be in the top, I believe, five or six in tackles in the ACC. I mean, that, obviously, you know, that's fantasy football talk. You, know, you can talk about those things. They're, they're great young men. Um, E.J. Manuel, you know, another, another young man, great, great young men that have, that have gone to the schools that they, they chose and have flourished, you know, where they are. Um, uh, Renner's dad, you know, we all know Bill Renner, you know, his, his dad, who uh, was a great, um, great player, you know, that coaches and teaches. And so those are, those are long-standing relationships when not only the player, but the player's father and the community that the player's father comes from that you know. And, um, and I, again, I can just speak to the fact that, that, that those young men that you just mentioned and, and EJ, the guys that I know personally, that uh, have done well and, and in their own right have uh, made the names for themselves. We always try to identify those players, uh, the who and the what, and, and he is definitely one of those players that uh, has has done, has played against other teams and has been explosive and got behind secondaries and, and has done a lot of things. So, you know, th there are different coverage elements that we'll have to we'll have to do and we'll have to be aware of. And we know that, you know, we know that they're going to throw the ball, you know, deep ones. We know that they're going to, you know, whether they go after Tim or Traquan. We know that that's part of what they do. Like I said, their offense is, is a multiple formation offense with a lot of moving parts. And um, right now, I believe they're 19th or 20th in the country in, the, in, in passing offense. They throw, they've thrown for over 300 yards a game. So their, their passing game or their style of offense, I'm quite sure will continue um, you know, as, as they've been utilizing it in the past. And our job is, is to make sure we're in position to go up and contest balls. and. Um, and, and, and put a rush on the quarterbacks who didn't have all day to back, back there to throw. We just talked about a few players, Max Vallis and Eric Smith, you know, Sadiq, um, Connor Ringo Wees. I mean, that's another guy. He's, he's you know, Billy Scrobaz is there as a fullback, but you could put Orr on there as well. He's a true freshman as playing. Um, and it's, it's just great to see that these young guys have not quit, that they are, they want to soak up as much as they can learn because they want to win. They want to play better. They want to do better. And, and I tell you, it, it's exciting that irregardless of what's going on now, we still have to coach and teach these players with the three games left. North Carolina, one of the South's oldest rivalries. You know, Miami, a lot of guys in their career have here have been successful against Miami. And then obviously the last game of the year is always, you know, is always a big game. So there's a, as you said, Jerry, there's a lot of football left to be played, but there's also the development of guys that have been playing that they're going to be better football players. And, and that's the, that's the exciting.